So there's been a lot of misconception as regarding to if foreign medical students who graduated in the Philippines can actually stay back in the Philippines to proceed to their residency program or even to practice here in the Philippines. And because of that, I decided to bring one of my friends who has lived here in the Philippines for seven years. She is also a doctor. She actually graduated last two years. Why am I spilling all the wind? But anyways, she graduated here in the Philippines and proceeded to do her postgraduate internship here in the Philippines as well. So in the video, she's going to give us all the details and she's also going to clarify or give throw more light regarding that misconception. I still don't know why I am spilling the bean. You know, you guys just grab a coffee, grab a drink, whatever you can. Just grab something because this is actually going to be a very informative, educative and also a very entertaining interview. Hello beautiful people. My name is Adi and I am a third year medical student currently living and studying here in the Philippines. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much. If you have not subscribed yet to my channel, I just hope that you find your reason to subscribe today. Sit back and relax. I will see you shortly after this. So today we have my very special friend. Like, <laughs> how long have I even met known you? Uh, I met her in 2019. We met through my housemate Helen in 2019. Yeah. yeah. So she's so very, like two years. Yeah, two years now. And she's been an amazing friend. And, mm -hmm. and now she's a doctor. She actually studied here. So I just want you to like introduce yourself, your name. And yeah, basically your name, what school you attended here in the Philippines and stuff like that basically okay hi good morning thank you very much for having me on your channel <laughs> and my name is <laughs> my name is christiana Ayikola. i'm a medical doctor as she mentioned and then i studied at Cebu institute of medicine wow. in Philippines. yes wow wow <laughs> and yes. basically before you came here in the philippines what year did you even come what year did you come to Philippines? Uh, I arrived in Philippines in 2013, October 2013 to be exact. And you left 2020, 2020 right? 2020, yes. So that's like seven years. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. <laughs> so we're out with Dr. Christiana. She'll be traveling soon after how many years? Seven. Seven years. Like. <laughs> so we came out to this sense from the sense of Yeah, farewell to our celebration How do you feel? Thank you. I feel so honored. Hello, yeah. uh -huh. <laughs> that means you did your pre-med here, right? Yes, I did my pre-med in Philippines. What school? Same. Pre -med, uh, Southwestern University, Philippines. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> And um, so that means you spent like seven years here. And you guys, mm -hmm. let me mention it to you guys. You speak Cebuano. Is it Cebuano you speak? Yes, Which one? Cebuano. Cebuano. Can you, just, oh, you guys, she, she is so fluent. Like she speaks very well. Ah, it's admire okay. you then when you always speak. I'm like, ah, oh, Christiana, come on, teach me. So can you, can you like greet us or say something to my subscriber? Because I actually have lots of, um, Filipino subscribers, okay, yeah. Okay. Can you just say something okay. to them, greet them, just tell them something in Cebuano? Ah, uh, like what? It's better if I have something to translate. <laughs> um, like, hi, my name is um, Christiana. Welcome to today's interview. I studied okay. basically just your introduction in Cebuano. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, let me try. I think my Cebuano <laughs> is a bit rusty, but I will try. <laughs> okay. Como está ni mi canal, my en hap ay my en gabi di ay. Nga ako nga lang kay Christiana ay pola ko an. Nagetsuela ko dira sa Philippines pag 2013 ang to 2020. Nga ako nga eskwelahan kay Cebu Institute of Medicine. Or I get. You guys. <laughs> I'm just looking like I'm so lost. Oh, that's so. Yeah. Wait, but how did you even learn? How did you learn? 
How did I learn? I just kind of picked it up. I think I've had a thing for languages initially. And then when people speak, I ask them to like interpret what they say. Like they actually dissect the statement like sentence and then every word in it. So I just like try to make it stick. And then I, I ended up like making sentences of my own. So it was better for me to grasp. Wow. Yeah, like I, people I wish, ask I wish, me if I actually people ask if I actually went to a school to learn, but no, yeah. I just picked up from everybody and anybody. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I think I think I think some <laughs> so, people have a thing for some people. That's what I would say. I think some people learn easily when it comes to learning. Yeah, language. and then yeah. you also have to have an interest, interest. in languages. Yes. Yeah, it's very. If you don't have the interest. You won't even bother, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, so. Mm-hmm. You guys, just forget about it. Me, I, I cannot speak. <laughs> Let me not come and kill myself. <laughs> All right. So you mentioned that you studied in, mm-hmm. you did your MD program in CIM, mm-hmm. and then you yes. did your, your pre-med was in Southwestern. Yes. Is there a reason why you switched schools for your MD or just personal reasons? Oh, just personal reasons. I actually, um, after pre-med, I actually applied to CIM, Cibodoc, and southwestern and then like as the application process was i got admit i got admitted into all three schools but then along the line i just decided like for personal reasons that let me just go to same because you know everybody's always like oh same high and mighty i'm like oh let's just try that for a change and all that stuff and then really? as god would have it as god would have it because it wasn't by my power <laughs> as god would have it yeah everything worked out well i was able to survive the school the pressure everything that came with it and here I am today. <laughs> how is medical school basically in CIM? Like, how is it basically? Uh, so uh, and the mode, you know, you know, the people normally yeah. talk about traditional medicine, non-traditional yeah. medicine. So what mm-hmm. type of learning, what learning method did you guys use for CIM? Okay, for, so for CIM, we use the problem-based learning. So it's like you read on your own, you have like a list of competencies, like what the student is supposed to know, what they're supposed to know about different topics. So we have small group discussions, like three to four times a week, and then we'll meet together in small groups, we discuss the competencies, because usually there's a case given to us with the competencies, so we discuss all of that. But there's usually a preceptor that sits in with us to make sure that we're discussing in line with what we're supposed to know so that we don't go off track. Yeah, so we discuss together, we make corrections. We, If there's any, like, if there's something someone doesn't understand, we clarify stuff like that. And then at the end of the week, we have um, a doctor or a lecturer who usually comes in and gives, like, a general lecture on the topic and everything. So everybody's on the same page. Yeah, that's basically how we do the learning. Oh, so you're yeah so you're 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 encouraged to be a self-directed learner so you have yeah. to learn on your own yes yeah it's, instead of someone coming to school coming to feed teach you every you. day yeah. yeah so yeah you're actually motivated to study this because you have to know it yeah and they now yes. at the end of the day they also guide you through not like they're just yes. throwing it at you no there will be someone that will guide you through like oh this is what you're supposed to do it's like the basics of it and all that all right. Meanwhile, you yeah. guys, I forgot to mention, hey, how did I forget? Christina <laughs> has gone back to Nigeria and she has also okay. seen Nigerian <laughs> board exams and she passed. So <laughs> let's just congratulate her first. Just you have to pause this video. Just pause the video and just type <laughs> type congratulations because it's not easy, basically. So yeah. she, she's now a licensed medical doctor in Nigeria. And then Thank I remember you, you yeah. I remember when I met you, that was in 2019, yeah. you were doing your postgraduate internship, yes. right? Yeah. So let mm-hmm. me explain just for people who don't really know. In Philippines, after you graduate, you proceed to do the PGI, that's the postgraduate internship, which I feel mm-hmm. it's equivalent to the housemanship we do in Nigeria. So basically, after she graduated, she went ahead to do the postgraduate internship. And... Um, I just, I don't know. Personally, for me, I really don't know anyone who has done PGI as a foreign student. You're actually the first person, you know? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, okay. you're the first person. So how were you able to get into PGI? Like, how, how was um, it possible for you? 
Okay, so usually the thing is most, well, I can't say like most foreigners because I don't know, I know a lot of foreigners, but I don't know anyone who's actually taking the postgraduate internship. Work. Yeah. So most Nigerians usually don't go for the postgraduate internship because they feel like, you know, it's a waste of time. They'd rather go home, make some money and stuff like that. But for me, I just decided to stay back for at least a year, gain more knowledge, gain more experience, like hands-on. Because uh, let's be honest with each other. During internship, you're more focused on, oh, what can I do for the patient? You're more focused on clerical duties, actually. Not like, you're not intricately into medicine itself. You're more focused on like paperwork and all of that. But then as a postgraduate intern, then you get to be like, you know, a frontline for all of this stuff. You do less paperwork, you do more action, more running yeah. around and stuff like that. So you, you're you involved in the management of the patient, yes. not just in the paperwork and all that. So that's what I wanted to learn, you know, have that one year to myself, learn on that um, very competent and skilled doctors, know how things are done, how patients are managed, develop empathy, care, and all of that stuff for patients. So I tried to go with the postgraduate internship, although it wasn't easy because yeah, most hospitals are not accustomed to admitting foreign students, exactly. especially like African foreign students for postgraduate mm -hmm. internship. So yeah, with God's grace and favor, I was admitted into one hospital. Because initially, yeah, I wanted to go to this government hospital because yeah, I thought that I would learn a lot there. Like it, it, had, it had always been on my mind. But okay. then when it was time for me to apply, um, they said they weren't accepting for instance, that are not from a particular sister school. So I couldn't apply there. So I had to look for other options. And then God just sent me to this other hospital, which was really nice. I had rotated there before as an intern. So it was familiar territory for me. So I just went there and then everything was fine. They welcomed me with open arms. It was, it was just the best experience. <laughs> I, I'm just curious. So for a foreign student, so let's mm -hmm. assume someone wants to apply for this program for the postgraduate mm -hmm. internship after you graduate. Mm -hmm. So you can just apply. Is it allowed? Yeah, they they have like they have the Philippine program. They have a walk-in system. So usually it's like there's a matching process before the end of your your internship as a medical student. They have a matching period. So most um, Filipinos apply in that matching period. And then okay. after that, there's a walk-in period for those who don't get matched to their hospital of choice. Okay. So in the walk-in period, anybody can apply to anywhere. And then if the hospital still has vacancies or openings or slots, they will accept you. So for me, I actually applied in the walk-in period to wow. the hospital. And, and you yeah. were accepted? And you I were was accepted. accepted. Yes, I was. Because honestly, you know, I keep telling people this. I've mentioned it before in my channel that I don't know anyone. You're the first person. <laughs> so this, this is the, yeah. this is the lady I'm, I've been talking about. She's the only one that I knew, I know rather that stayed back to do her postgraduate internship. Because most people I know after graduating, they just you know travel back home. Back so home. let's assume I want to do my PGI here. <laughs> let's just assume. So I can just walk okay. in and apply. Is yeah, you can just that there's that's a there's a walk-in period. So you can but you can actually apply before the walk-in period and then follow up with the hospital. They'll get back to you if there are vacancies and all that stuff. But the thing is most hospitals they usually have preferences for students who graduated from their school and all that. So they'll give them like priority over those who are coming from other schools. But are they also welcoming for foreign students, irrespective they of are, your country? Do you think so? I think they are because um I, I know people like after I, I did my postgraduate internship, I met some I I knew I know some other friends of mine who graduated after me. They are from Nepal and then they did their postgraduate internship at another hospital also. Really? So I think it's wow. gen, yeah, it's generally fair for all foreigners as long as like their quota is not exhausted. Wow. <laughs> I never knew yeah. this so honestly. <laughs> because almost everybody I know, everybody just goes back. Okay, yeah. this is new information. Anyway, <laughs> if you don't mind, can you tell us the hospital or is it like a private stuff? Can you tell us the hospital where you did your postgraduate Where I did? Okay, yeah. I did my postgraduate internship at Visayas Community Medical Center. It's uh, now called Visayas Med. Yeah, it's, it's a great place to be as a, as a postgraduate intern. Wow. The experience is compared to none. Like, you know, do you... I have no You're words. Speechless. <laughs> I have no words. You're speechless. You're speechless. 
<laughs> if I had to do my PGI ship all over again, I would go back there any day, any time. It was uh, like the best ex- medical experience ever. Like there was no discrimination. There was wow. no segregation, especially as a foreigner. Like they would treat you equally, even better wow. than others, if I may say. Yeah, wow. so it, it was like they just want, they just prioritized your learning in that hospital. Like if I, mm. if I could go back to Philippines and have my residency training, I would go there 10 times wow. over. Oh my God, are you serious? <laughs> yes, wow. like so the in case, environment is so welcoming. Wow. Do you have yeah. anyone to give a shout out in case someone works at that hospital? Do you have any like your oh. colleague? Just give a shout out to them. Um, okay, first, I'll give a shout out to the CME director. That's the um, Continuing Medical Education Director, Dr. Maritzi Eribal. She was she was such a mother to me. Like, there were times when I really... I'm, getting, I'm feeling emotional for you. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was just really like, you know, like, things were bad for me. And then, like, I needed emotional support and all that. And she was just, she was always there. She... She was like a mother to me there. Like, yeah, and you can imagine, like, you know, I would feel weird because I'm a foreigner. I'm going there to apply for something. I should feel like, oh, there'll be racism or segregation or discrimination and stuff. But none of that was there at all. None oh. of that. I, I, There was never a moment where I rotated in that hospital that I felt like, oh, they're going to treat me bad or they don't like me and stuff like that. Like, even the nurses... The orderlies, everyone, the transport personnel, the residents, everyone was so nice to me. Wow. And then, yeah, because we didn't, we didn't exactly have time to finish our PGI shape because of the pandemic and all that stuff. Yeah. So yeah. we were pulled, we we're supposed to graduate in June 2020, but we we're pulled out as of March 2020. And then uh, something happened to me along the line. So I had to move to the hospital. So I was residing at the hospital. For and then so, since I was there, yeah, for free. For free. Wow. Yes. Wow. So since I was there, I just decided that, okay, I'm going to volunteer as a frontliner because the hospital was really understaffed and all that stuff, you know, like the nurses, the doctors, everyone was taking like turns to come to work and they were running shifts and all that. So I was like, okay, let me give like the little that I can give back to this hospital. So I volunteered as a frontliner and all that stuff. And like, even though I was living at the hospital, they didn't see me as, oh, I was a tenant or I was a squatter or anything. Like the love was still there. Like the friendship the bond was still there like i think i'm going to cry <laughs> <laughs> this is so sweet to hear honestly yeah but yeah it was just it was it was the best for me i think it was the best for me <laughs> <laughs> what well, am i emotional for you oh my god this is crazy <laughs> it was the best for me there's no way i can tell my story without including that hospital that's in that's really sweet the next question i would like to also ask okay. you know i'm just i'm i'm an inquisitive person so after you finished your pgi that's your Mm postgraduate internship um why were you not able to write your board exams the philippines board exams or were you not allowed Um, to write board exams? so that's the thing i actually went to make inquiries on how to write the exam as a foreigner and all that stuff so there's this um letter of reciprocity that they would need from um in philippines so the letter is supposed to come from your home country so basically it's a letter that states that oh if a filipino comes to nigeria and like fulfills all like necessary requirements goes to med school does the training and all that stuff they'll be allowed to write the board exam in nigeria so yeah when i made inquiry from the Nigerian government like how I could come across such letter and all that stuff they what I was told was that I would have to write a Nigerian board exam first before they would issue such a letter and all that stuff and then there's so much bureaucracy in Nigeria like they were just tossing me left right and center so I was just like okay let me just come home take the board exam and let's see like where God leads me to if I would actually come back to Philippines and write their own board exam as well okay so assuming they were able to give you the letter the letter yeah what's that letter again so if we're able to get if we're able to get the letter you would have written philippines i would yeah yes really i would have come back yeah so why didn't they give it to you (laughs) that's nigeria for you (laughs) really because i I think um some people in my comment section like when i mentioned things like this that it's not really easy for foreign students to write for the exams Mm -hmm. i think a couple of people have mentioned this to me but i really didn't understand it that way 
So yeah, but the thing is, you know, the things other nationalities, it's easy for their government to give to them because I know of Nepali people, I know of other African countries like Somalians or South Africans who have come back to actually practice or to wow. do their residency in Philippines. But Nigeria is just a special country, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Everything no, was I... different in Nigeria. <laughs> special country. I like that special word. <laughs> wow. Everything was different. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay. So yeah. coming to Philippines, what do you miss most about Philippines now that you're Ooh. in Nigeria? What do you miss most? Uh, I think I would miss the oh you miss rather the... because you're already out. Like what do yeah. you miss most? I don't think there's the most. Like there are three things on my mind now that are still struggling for first position. <laughs> So the three things that are struggling for first position, we have like the food and then 24-7 power supply uh, and then internet, those three things, the basic necessities of life. I, will, I miss them the most. Wow. But I think especially the food. The food Which food? Yeah. Which food exactly? Everything and anything. <laughs> And you know, you know, like they have like finger foods here and there. So I, I miss the ability to be able to like eat at 12 and then still eat something at one and two and three and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Like what's your, favorite, what, what's your favorite Filipino dish? What's your favorite? Oh, uh, I don't have a favorite. Are you serious? <laughs> yes. But I have things that I would rather eat. Like mm-hmm. shomai, like noyong, like um. Uh, what else? Tempura. Oh my god. Tempura. Are you serious? Which one is tempura? The one that it's tempura the fit. Yeah. The, the long one. one like, that it's yeah, the white. Long one. That yeah, it's that's right. That they fry. I've never tried mm-hmm. it. And they have this like they have this sweet and spicy sauce. They have gosh, they have different sauces. <laughs> Christiana is <laughs> Christiana, you are half Filipino. Take me back. Are you serious? <laughs> you know the, yes. the, the most common dish I eat here is actually the street chicken and rice i've not really yeah, tried I, I miss that too yeah i, I love it the you will never and the chicken i just tell my ah. friend like you can never get that street chicken in like you know the way they fry street chicken it. and you can yes. never <laughs> it's so nice and it's cheap like 25 oh percent yes. oh god i miss the fact that food is so cheap over there and then you'll be filled even if you eat like something really cheap yeah. Like you won't be, you will still be hungry for food, even if the food that you get is cheap. It's yeah. so nice. Ah, oh, God, take <laughs> me back. I plan to visit again soon. Really? I feel like the borders are open. Yes. Are you serious? I hope to be able to visit. Oh, uh, we'll love to have you. Anyway, yeah. so moving on to the next question. Okay. Um, you you stayed here seven years from 2030 mm-hmm. to 2020. So yes. basically, what were your challenges? What were the challenges you faced here? maybe while studying uh, here or while living here, basically? Uh, for me, my challenges were mostly financial. You know, it's not easy, like, you know, being in a foreign country and then yeah. supporting yourself and all of that stuff. Sometimes you have to wait for funds from home and then you don't get here on time. You would have to improvise. You'd have to manage and stuff like that. So basically, I think my major challenges here were financial. Like, when I first came, I was able to adapt to the people i was able to immerse myself in the culture and the way of life and all of that stuff but yeah the most the major challenge was more financial so basically not really cultural because not really the, cultural the, yeah most yeah, people really. for me for personally for me i think mm-hmm. mine was more like cultural differences and stuff like that mm-hmm. even some people have invited on my channel too <laughs> yeah like, cultural yeah it will take you a while they are they are there are lots of things you're not really used to yeah like but you i found it easy to adjust easily to them oh this is how they do things oh, okay that's fine i mean it's their way of life so yeah. okay i mean if if they would come over to nigeria they would they should also be expected to adjust appropriately yeah yeah and then also you know you can speak the language so it's yeah a so it wasn't things. yeah mm-hmm. it wasn't really a problem yeah. yeah you know they're more open to you if you can if speak you can the speak. language i think yes. it's it's just a natural thing language kind of mm-hmm. brings bond it, it, it strengthens the bond bond between yeah people. It, it yeah it makes it creates the bond if the bond isn't there and then if the bond is there it, it strengthens strengthen and reinforces it. the bond yes 
Yeah, but but what of us? I cannot speak now. <laughs> yeah, I, I I really believe that the language, like you learning the language and everything, it really helped you. Mm-hmm. Well, it, yeah. it is what it is. Okay, yes. anyway, how are you adjusting to life back in Nigeria? Because you've spent oh, so much so much years here in the Philippines, uh, life right? In Nigeria. Yeah, how are you? How are you adjusting basically? I think I'm well adjusted already. already? Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I tend to adjust to different like conditions, like as soon as I can, because you know, let's not prolong the would eventually I would have to get adjusted, right? So why not just start now? Yeah. I've adjusted. I'm just still I'm still getting used to, you know, having to tell like family that oh I'm going somewhere and stuff like that. Because yeah, there in the Philippines, I don't have to tell people that oh I'm going somewhere. I can just go out on my own, come in on my own. I had my free will, but now with family, it's like everybody <laughs> wants to know your whereabouts, where are you going to, when are you coming back, things like that. So you have to tell people, oh, I'm going somewhere, I'm going to see a friend, I'll be back shortly and things like that yeah i think that's my major like issue with adjusting like having to be accountable to other people as well yeah yeah Yeah. and i forgot to ask you what states in nigeria are you from and where do you live in nigeria i forgot okay i'm from ogun state in nigeria but i live yeah i know but i live in oh yeah yeah it's close to lagos Lagos yeah yes so I, but I live in Lake in Moe. Moe is actually on the outskirts of Lagos State, so it's further into Ogun State. Okay. All right. Yes. The next question I actually wanted to ask you, you've already answered it. I was thinking of like I was thinking that you know writing the board exam is kind like it's not really allowed or something. But you already clarified that if your country can actually give you yeah. the, the letter, document, you're, yes. you're you're allowed to write. You're good it. to go. Yeah. Okay. So how about yes. what's your life update? What's your next plan? Do you have any plans um, yet? What's what's the next thing? <laughs> Life update is yeah. okay. So yeah, when I go back to Nigeria, I got a job somewhere else working as like you know a part-time doctor, a teacher, wow. and house mistress. Yeah, part of fundraising activities here yeah, for the board exam. So yeah. imagine how hard it was for me to juggle like all of these responsibilities with like studying for the board exam and all that stuff. But yeah, God was faithful and God is still faithful. So it was so like you know overcome those challenges pass my word exams go for my induction stuff like that Aww. so now i'm waiting to start my house job hopefully <gasps> in lagos state <laughs> are you serious yes. what hospital mm-hmm. what hospital you know uh, Filipi- filipinos will say what hospital yeah <laughs> yeah what uh, hospital what hospital and yeah. hospital guy <laughs> But it's in Lagos State, though. It's in Lagos State. I'm not sure yet. We just had our exam on Tuesday, so we're waiting for the interview session. Okay. And then after that, it, we can... But it will be within this month. Is it a government hospital? Yeah, it's a state hospital, state government hospital. Oh, last suit. Yeah. Is it last suit? No, not last suit. Uh, but the one I'm buying for is, like, there are three hospitals, so I wrote it wow. in three hospitals. So General Hospital... Then Lagos Island Maternity Hospital and Massey Children's Hospital. Wow. Wow. I'm really yes. happy for you. I'm really yeah, happy thank for you. Thank you very much. Like, <laughs> you know, it's not easy. Whenever I see someone that, that has graduated or, you know, making progress, I'm really, really like happy because, you know, you, you understand. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you can relate. Yeah. I'm really happy for you. But um, how long did it take you to prepare for the board exams, for Nigerian board exams? How many months? was it uh so the exam was oh i mean we're looking at the tentative schedule because they usually don't release the dates early enough like mm. they release it like two months the exam so we're thinking of a tentative schedule of sometime in april so i started preparing like january ish but then um. they released the date to be in june but then so it's like from january to june i should have been preparing right but yeah wasn't really like serious rigorous preparation i think i actually started doing serious preparations around may, april may wow and <laughs> yeah. you took the exam when when june took, june wow that's mm-hmm. short yeah it's a short time i mean like, a lot of people started preparing like earlier than that so yeah. it depends on you like you know i had to juggle work and pre- and reviewing for the exam so when I finally was able to like get a schedule that would work for me, it was around that April. Okay. Yeah. 
And so it's more like I was, yeah, I was passively reviewing from January to April, then actively reviewing from April. April to, to the exam. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Congrat- Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Christian, yeah. congratulations. It's, Thank it's you not so easy. Much. Yeah, and no, it's not. The next question I would like to ask you, right? With the whole, you know, on the average, one mm-hmm. in five Nigerian medical doctors, at least, or one in four medical doctors in Nigeria, they have an underground plan to relocate. Yes. yes. Do you have any It plans? is necessary for survival. Very necessary. <laughs> Very necessary. <laughs> Do you because have the government here yeah. it's, not, it's not doctor friendly at all the policies the legislative arm it's not doctor friendly at all so you have to find a way to make things work for yourself did, did you hear about did you see that video where um people some doctors were applying to saudi arabia and then mm-hmm. later on we had the news that the government went over there to close mm-hmm. down or the, rather to arrest some or something like that yeah, you hear like, about that why are they trying to frustrate us for <laughs> heaven's sake like if you're not going to make things work for us in the country you might as then well I, let us find greener pastures right yeah like <sighs> Oh God, but everyone has a plan to run away from this yeah. place. I mean, we can establish ourselves outside when we're well to do outside, when we're settled outside, then we can come back inside and try to make the system work. But we can't change the system from within. We have to change it when we are we when we have found our footing. We can't change it from when we're still here. It's not mm. possible. Uh, Christian already <laughs> have you already have a plan. <laughs> Let us not ask you for that. <laughs> <laughs> you already have a plan. <laughs> plan B. Plan yeah, B is it's, very it's really, necessary. It's really so yeah. sad. Like, it's really so yeah. sad because almost everyone you meet, every Nigerian doctor you meet, mm-hmm. even those that are already in residency, like, already yes. gone far in their program. You know, residency yes. program in Nigeria, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure it's even three years. I know it's, like, it's it how many years? Even be three years? Like, I think I'm five sure to six three. years. Or even That's more, on a good day. On a, on a good, day, good day, five to six years. Six years. Yes, because and I, you know, I know Nigeria people. Has... I know people that are already gone far in their residency program that left everything to relocate. Yeah. Honestly, Nigeria has a way of slowing things down. You know, like you know, for me, like those I graduated with, they're already in their first year of residency. I'm still doing my house job here. Because Nigeria is very backward in things. Like, they have a way of drawing out the process. Like, something that's supposed to be like, oh, something is two years. They have a way of making it four years or more. It's not necessary. God will help us. Let's not go into this Nigeria. Because we cannot cannot finish this this today. It will never end. Anyways, do you have any um, program yet of interest in terms of your residency? Do you have any program yet? You're yeah, hopefully, in. if I if I do decide to go into residency training, I'm going to go into obstetrics and gynecology. Why, really, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. really? But when did you I pick up interest? When do you pick uh, up interest? Okay, so this is how it's how it evolved. So initially, before I got into med school, I wanted to do neurology. So I wanted to be a neurosurgeon, stuff like that. You know, it was very fascinating, okay? Yeah. And then, like, first year of med school, I was thinking, oh, cardiothoracic surgery, you know, the name is big. <laughs> very, very <laughs> wonderful. You know, I'm yeah. a cardiothoracic surgeon. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then after considering, you know, time and, you know, patience, I'm like, you know, I'm just, I love I think it was in third year when I actually got into OB rotation and then doing all of this OB stuff, you know, baby out. I was like, gosh, I love OB. And then really? I fell in love with OB. Yes. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so you know, that was how I fell in love with OB. Wow. And I, I don't yeah. know if it's, if it's weird, but I think someone has already mentioned for me, I don't even know before I came into med school, actually, mm-hmm. I used to watch all these, um, discovery channel crime okay. investigation you know okay. I, I'm, like i was so interested in forensic science you uh-huh. know what, what was, but right You're now intrigued. pathology no. <laughs> count me out no no, no we don't need no cup first ah. no, we don't need no back <laughs> Like, you know how I was always fascinated when I watched those things, you know how Americans yeah. do it, like maybe yeah. someone that died 20, 50 years ago, they will still find out oh. who killed, you know, I was so interested, yeah. I was like, oh, I'm going to be a forensic <laughs> doctor, yeah, I love that. <laughs> but right now, I'm not sure I still have, like, I love it, but 
um, pathologies, pathology is not really my favorite, I would say. Yeah. So there's no how you can do that without pathology. I mean, yeah. so right now yeah. I don't even know, but I'm just hoping maybe by the time I get to my first year and start mm-hmm. rotations, maybe. Yeah, I'll when you start find... rotating, you'll find something that you'll fall in love with. Right, right. Yeah. That's just my... <laughs> That's just yeah, mentioning is about doing what you love. If not, yeah. you get frustrated. Yeah. Yeah. And I really love the the way it's so broad. You can actually mm-hmm. like it can actually, be anything. Yeah. yeah. All right. So what are your final words? What's your advice to us here? Yeah, to us <laughs> that are already here. And then your advice to people who intend to come here in the future for medicine. Um advice to those who are already to us yes medicine. people like us yeah <laughs> keep pushing keep pushing that's the only thing keep i need pushing. to hear this again there will be, <laughs> keep pushing there will be days when you will be so discouraged like you feel like you know you should just up and go or you should just quit but you have to keep on pushing there are days when you have to encourage yourself yeah so just just keep pushing I mean, it's okay to stop and cry but yeah. don't quit you can rest if you must, but don't don't give up this dream. You're almost there. Just just a little more push, and then you know the finish line is just within 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 reach. So just go for it. Aww. And then for those who are planning to study medicine, you have to be sure that this is what you want. You have to be a thousand and one percent sure that this is what you want. This kind of life you want to live because medicine does not just end after med school. There's so much more to it. I mean, maybe the hard part is learning the basic stuff from med school, but then you have to be resilient after yeah. that. You have to be perseverant after that because you will meet different seniors. You'll meet different people in higher positions. They will demean you. They will be condescending to you. They will insult you in front of patients, in front of anybody. They will insult you in front of your juniors, but you have to make up your mind that this is what you want and this is what you're going for okay so there's so much resilience to learn in medicine yeah so it has to be sure that this is what you want to do yeah (laughs) (laughs) thank you so much like i really appreciate this advice thank you so much sometimes sometimes we just need to hear it you know again again and again again. Yeah. yeah thank you so much i really had a good time with you but to wrap up this interview to wrap this up just tell us something in Cebuano like thank you for watching subscribe to Addis channel or just tell us just anything anything that comes to your Uh, mind or greet people uh, greet your Cebuano people what's it called is it Cebuano Cebuano? people Uh yeah greet Cebuano people (laughs) and tell them that you miss them (laughs) okay Uh, so let's try to you know Okay, okay, let's go. Salamat ninyo tanan sa pag-subscribe sa Addis Channel ng YouTube channel. Yeah, God bless ninyo. Ayaw mo paglakaw-lakaw di ha, kaya naman COVID sa gawas. Then, sa mga wala pa ka nakabakuna, pag-show mo niya magbakunahan mo ha, ato mo sa Galeria o sa Robinsons o sa Waterfront, pakuha mong bakuna. Kasi sa Pfizer o Moderna o Johnson and Johnson, basta magbakunahan mo tanan. Ha? Sige, go. Thank you very much. Salamat po. Uh, uh, I think I understood what you said. You told them that they should okay. go to get their vaccine, their vaccine yes. at Waterfront and also irrespective oh, yeah. of the brand, they should just take brand, it, right? Yes, yeah. yes. You see, <laughs> your okay. girl is learning. Okay. <laughs> oh, God, I really okay. had a good time. Thank you so much. Yeah, and if you've not subscribed, welcome. please make sure to subscribe. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. It's just a way for you to support my channel. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And yeah, I think that's basically it. I'll see you in my next video. Take care. Bye.